Welcome back, everyone. I'm Jeremy Simon. This is another episode of 3D Universe Untethered, and my guest today is Rick Williams, a good friend of mine and a longtime member of the Enable volunteer community along with me. Rick, welcome. Hello. How are you, Jeremy? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining me today. I've really been looking forward to this because you're doing some some really cool stuff on on multiple fronts. You and I, I we should we should point out are both musicians, and a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about today uh, kind of connects with that because what we'll be talking about today is something that you're doing that's rather unique, which is incorporating the MIDI protocol, which is used primarily in, in, in music for music instrumentation and that sort of thing. We'll talk more about that for those who aren't familiar. But using the MIDI protocol uh, and incorporating that into assistive devices, things like the, the 3D printed prosthetics and other sorts of assistive devices that we make in the Enable community. Do I have that about right, Rick? Yes, you, you nailed it. Excellent. You nailed it. So, so let's, we're going to get into that, and I, I really am excited to hear about what you're doing and what the potential is beyond what you're doing. But before we get to that, let's talk about you a little bit. So as I mentioned, longtime member of the Enable community. I think you've been part of that community for, what, five, six years at least five, now, Five, six right? years, yeah. Okay, yeah, nice. It's... And uh, I should point out that more recently, you've really been taking on quite a, a lot of responsibilities for the community. Um, uh, Rick is helping to run our, our help desk ticketing system now and approving the badges that come through for our digital uh, badge platform, how we sort of uh, uh, review and approve and validate makers and, and that sort of thing, uh, helping manage our chapters and our chapter map, just all, all kinds of things. So I want to thank you for all that you've been doing, Rick. No, I, 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 I kind of feel I owe you guys, you know, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> um, you, you kind of gave me a second chance here with my, well, uh, so let's, let's talk about that. Cause that's a big part of the story here. So you, you yourself, um, uh, had an accident a while back, right? This was, you said five or yeah, six years ago, five or six years ago. Yeah. So tell us about what and, happened. Uh, it was an absolute freak accident, but I guess most, most are. And, mm -hmm. uh, what it was is there was a hard drive that was stuck in a, in a, you know, in the old days, you had the big case, the mm -hmm. gigantic metal case. Oh, it yeah. was rusted in or something. It just wouldn't come out. I'm pulling on it. I'm pulling on it. Wouldn't let go. Finally, with the drive, it lets go out of the, out of, and they don't roll the edges anymore inside. No. In the old days, they rolled the edges. Now it costs too much. So it severed, uh, it severed my hand. <sighs> um, it, every, every tendon, artery, everything. Um, I only, they said I had five more minutes to live and, um, I was bleeding out basically. I don't really recall. Um, and <laughs> interestingly enough, I asked Alexa, uh, being the Amazon Alexa to call my wife. I was just going to tell her bye because I knew I was slipping and, uh, she got on the phone. Uh, it was, it was just crazy that she even had her phone because normally at work, she's not allowed to have it. Was that, that was another freak accident. She just happened to have it. She called the neighbor, told them get in the house no matter what. Um, they came in, found me bleeding out, and took me to the hospital and, and uh, reattached my hand. Oh, my God. Yeah. It yeah. was meant to be. You weren't, we weren't ready to, to lose you yet. <sighs> yeah, it was, it was awful. Um, and uh, the, the reattachment, I, I, I can't complain because it's better than nothing. I mean, it, much better than nothing. And uh, as you know, as a fellow musician, that's a big thing to lose, especially, you know. Absolutely. And let's let's clarify that. I, uh, to say that you're a musician, I think, is a bit of an understatement. So tell us a little bit more about your music background. How many instruments do you play? Twelve. Um, <laughs> I played twelve and a thirteenth on the way. Um, I, I'm actually learning a new one. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to play the harp, and I'm not very good at it. I, my fingers get stuck because I, I have a dexterity issue, but I have two reversed fingers, so I always have to. It doesn't <laughs> help. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. So, so um, mu music has been a big part of your life. Yeah, yeah, it, a huge part. And I, I help pay my way through college and everything with, with the music. And I've been in many, many bands. I've done studio work, um, you know, so I, I didn't, I wasn't ready to, to quit. Um, I okay. think we have in the house over the wife isn't listening. I think like 32 guitars, <laughs> wow. assorted synthesizers. We have a wall of synthesizers. Uh, you, yeah. you, you would you'd be horrified. Sounds like it's, fun. It's, yeah, but um, uh, what we what we've been trying to do is, I mean, you you take Albert Einstein as as an example, and 
the guy could conquer basically the, the, the universe with mathematics, but he couldn't learn to play the violin. The music really is, uh, it is an encompassment of mathematics and everything that makes your mind, uh, you know, what it is. We, we've had countless, even videos I've, I've sent you, where people were gone. I mean, Alzheimer's patients, people that were incredibly, um, you know, uh, stricken with dementia, they've been reintroduced to the instrument they played as a youth and they start coming back. It, it causes things to happen. It causes neurons to fire. It, ca it, it makes your brain uh, work differently. Music, it, it's just, it's not even an opinion. It's just the I, way it is. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It is, I've always felt that music is, is powerful healing and uh, that, that happens in many ways. There's, there's something about how, it, like you're saying, it uses the right and the left brain. You know, it's, it's yeah. you gotta have both. And, and I, maybe that's part of why it helps to reconnect those neurons, I don't know. But it, it, it certainly has that, that healing effect in, in many ways for many people. And so being such a big part of your life, I, I, I can hardly imagine what you must have been feeling as you're there in the hospital. Now you, you come out of you know, surgery, they've just reattached this hand. What, what was it like? What kind of function did you have early None. on? None. Zero. It, was, it wasn't even there. It was gone. It was, um, there was nothing there. And the doctor didn't think there would be. They were going to take it. They were just going to go ahead and finish. There was a couple of of uh, things that were still holding on, they were going to go ahead and amputate. The wife said, "No, no, okay. I, I will. I won't authorize that." And, and it's interesting because we have so many amputees that I work with. I, I join all the amputee groups in the area, and all of them say the same thing about music. It's not something I can be involved in. And we're like, "Yeah, it is." And they go, "Yeah, well, I'm sure it is. You know, yeah, yeah, you, you say that." but you don't understand. I go, yeah, I kind of do. Um, which is one of the reasons that we've tried so hard to get the amputee community, if they wish, we, we custom design instruments, musical instruments, that allows them to be musicians, very good musicians. I mean, there, there's very few compromises that we've had to make. We, we've changed tunings, we change how things work a little bit but they can do as they wish. And, and because the amputees, some of them want to use a, a limb that they may no longer have, let's face it, uh, MIDI has been around, it's been the holy grail of music since the 80s, the very early 80s, uh, and probably before. And it does allow for things that I hear all the new designers wishing they had. I was on one of your meetings the other day and this guy was all pleased with himself because he was going to have touch and they were gonna have all these things that, oh my God, you know, you, well, you know what? That's been around since the 80s with MIDI. Mm -hmm. And MIDI has nothing but improved with MIDI too. And now you, you know, um, uh, now with MIDI polyphonic expression, which is MPE, even more so, the expression capability of MIDI is now skyrocketed and it's two-way. Yeah, so, so, so for people that might not be as familiar with that, let's just clarify here that, that MIDI is a, a protocol that's used for mostly for music, but it's uh, got a few advantages, right? Number one, is optimized for extremely low latency. And yep. that certainly seems like that would be beneficial when you're dealing with assistive devices that are responding to your yeah. directions. It has, like you said, the ability to convey all kinds. It's not just about notes on and off. It can convey no. different types of expression, uh, you know, effects, you know, pedals, all sorts of things that can drive different dimensions of, of movement potentially, right? Woodwind instruments. It does yeah. your breath. The breath is there. You don't see a concert that isn't, the lights aren't controlled with the MIDI. The MIDI mm -hmm. drives the lights, but think about that for a minute. You're, you're driving electrical equipment and the MIDI, it's a two-way street. The MIDI knows what it's done. It sets the clocks because everybody gets their own clock. You can right. synchronize clocks. All the things that everybody's complaining that they haven't got yet has already designed if you could just get them to look at it. Hmm. 
And right, so, so we're going to put a pin in that because I want to talk more about the sort of the potential within the Enable community of how MIDI can be leveraged. But let's go back and finish your story first. So you, you had almost no function when they reattached this hand. What right. happened next? Because you have regained function. How, how did that unfold? Well, um, I had actually been looking for something to help me because I miserably failed uh, when they sent me to... Uh, you know, you have to go in, of course, and they try to work the hand to wake it up. You know, they 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 uh, they they do all these terrible things, bending it and twisting it, trying to you know to to keep the muscles from atrophying. Well, I wasn't having it. It was super painful. Even hmm. though the hand was dead, the pain was just unbelievable. Hmm. So I, I quit. I couldn't do that. And what I did is I had gone on in line and I had found this exoskeleton hand. I don't have a better name for it because, as you mm -hmm. know, sometimes when you find the things, they'll they'll call it some, you know, some cutesy thing. But I yep. was looking at the pictures, going, "That's an ugly thing," but I wonder if that would work for me. So, with a little help, I could print it myself, but I couldn't assemble it with one hand. So, yeah. of course, I got a little help assembling it, and this thing just 24 by 7 worked the hand. It moved the fingers. It opened and closed my my fist. It m worked the thumb. Everything was constantly moving. So how did this device function? Was it activated by bending your wrist or your elbow, or what was actually oh, triggering? Oh, no, it was the... constant. It was just constant movement. There was no uh, trigger. It, was, was this a powered device? Yes. It, it, it actually ah. ran on 9 volts, I and see. you plugged it in, and, and, and all it did was constantly do this, moving the hand and making it, making okay. it move. So I had no ability to trigger it at the time. I didn't know anything about it. I just had, it just basically it, it, uh, forced the hand never to stop moving. Um, and somehow you're saying that your hand just kind of, I don't know, what, reconnected those, those nerves or signals or, or learned how to move like that again? Well, it was interesting because the, the surgeon, they had used something called, a, I'm, I'm not a, a, a medical doctor, it was a collagen sheath. And he says, well, we're going to go ahead and put your nerves in this collagen sheath. And they had restitched all of the tendons together, which didn't work really well. Um, and the collagen sheaths normally only work if it's X number of centimeters between the two ends of the nerve, which mine was way beyond that. So they said, this, it's not going to work probably, but, you know, my wife is very persuasive. Mm. Um, so they put everything in a collagen sheath, and it was about a month later, and I'm laying in bed, and we have a, one of our dogs is a dachshund, and it was licking my hand, and I almost went through the ceiling. I felt it. It was like, ah, it kind of like, you know, when you hit your elbow, it was that kind of a mm. elect, almost electrical feeling. And, and I ripped my glove, the, uh, the exoskeleton off because it was I thought I'd been shocked. I thought huh. it, I thought it shocked me is what I thought originally. Um, and it works. It, it just started to work. I could move a little, not a great yeah. deal, but a little. Uh -huh. But you know what? I'm like, well, I'll take it. So um, I didn't want to quit playing, so I built some special instruments for me, which I sent you uh, in, in another email, and I built these instruments that allowed me to play even though I didn't have fingers yet. All right, well, we got to take a look at these now that you've mentioned. I'm going to share my screen here, and you tell ah. me which, which of these we're referring to. Point me in the right direction here, Rick. Um, there is one, oh, uh, number, one, two, three, four, on the okay, top. this one. Fourth, here. yes. That was basically the first one I built. It was a shovel um, from Ace Hardware. And uh, I took the shovel and I put pickups in it. And uh, the pickups, and I put tuners on it. I'll let, I'll let this go because it, it explains it very well. Okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Take this. I'm doing close up. And I'm going to put it in here. And it snaps in like that. Oh, it can be many things, anything I want to put in it. Okay. And, and this, oh, now this you can play shovel. slide guitar. It's a shovel. Yeah, it's, it's this is that. very funny though, if, as a shovel. And with this uh, shovel, because I can't, you know, do this was the first try, yeah. Huh? <laughs> I love it. With this thing. Okay. 
saw this um, it was on my Facebook page and Wonderful. their response was amazing because everybody wanted to do this they all wanted to I do this imagine. so I then upgraded my shovel the MIDI and I redesigned <laughs> it as a MIDI controller I think that's the first time I've ever heard that statement I upgraded yeah. my shovel to MIDI. I did yeah <laughs> well it even gets worse if you go to row uh, like three uh, column three that's a a MIDI this controller, yeah, that's that a MIDI. A con well, yes, it's a it's a bedpan, <laughs> and that's a full that's a full blown MIDI. Uh, we call it a shitar. You can cut that out if you choose, but it, it, it's a full blown MIDI controller, and it sounds awesome. And so we started doing this for amputees. We started running into people that came back. We had some people that came back from Afghanistan, and they were players guitar, keyboards, violins. We had a cellist and they wanted to play again and they had lost their hands in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And so we figured out a way to not only change how the instrument works. Um, for instance, if you go to row two, uh, yeah, this is fun, row two column, I think it's uh, three. That right there is a MIDI controller. What we did is we built this for a guy that lost his hands. We actually ran copper up the sides of the neck. We, we took a, this is a, a very nice PRS guitar. It has five mini controllers on it. Hmm. And uh, we took and ran copper up the sides of the neck and we soldered the frets to the copper on both sides. He, and he was then able to play without a right hand to strum. Uh, everything was fully automatic and it sounds incredible. It sounds like a full symphony orchestra. It comes out. This thing can theoretically drive about 4,000 devices, external wow. synthesizers. Um, and so the music thing started to come back. That's what we started doing initially. And, um, you know, then we were like, well, if we can build these MIDI controllers, why don't we make it two way, you know, to where. Uh, we can build prosthetics and use the MIDI protocol because now you have all of what you and I were just talking about. You have touch, you have, you have feel, you have all of these things that you can set off yep. further R up the arm. Uh, the so one I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to understand the history here because you, it sounds like, you know, you don't need a prosthetic device. You've now regained, you know, pretty good functionality with your hand. So now it sounds like you're starting to think about how you can use this to help other people that might have yes. uh, limb differences, amputees, et cetera. So it, it, is it that since, since you went through this then, is that pretty much been your main focus through the Enable community is, is figuring out how you can help bring people back to music or, or music to people that want that in their lives who have limb differences? Has that been kind of the main focus? I think, I think that we're trying to do both. What we're trying to do is make people understand that some of these prosthetics that people are putting out there that we're see you're seeing them. I mean, mm -hmm. we're see I'm seeing our kids coming back from wars and they're still hanging uh, Troutman hooks on them. And, and to me, a lot of the complexity doesn't really need to be there in these prosthetics. It's mm -hmm. already built into the MIDI protocol and unfortunately, they're trying to emulate and simulate that using standard, say, Adreno commands, which don't make any sense. In order to do that, you need an enormous amount of power. For instance, let's just talk simply, if you don't mind, about you know simple servo technology, which we've avoided. Mm -hmm. We avoid servos for one reason. They have to be powered all the time, right? Otherwise, they lose where they are. You can't just park them and go. You sort of can with an actuator. But it doesn't really know where it is because it's one way. So you have to reset it and bring it back to some normal. Well, MIDI doesn't, isn't like that. 
the MIDI protocol doesn't care where it's parked. It knows where it's parked already because it goes out and interrogates it and says, where are you? And it goes, I'm here. So from a power perspective, you don't have to power the thing until you're ready to use it. Yeah. So say you, say you close your hand on something, right? Well, in servo world, you have to keep powering those servos. And let's just say five or six of them, wrist, thumb, and fingers. I have one of mine that has 15 servos in it. It'll, it'll dim the lights on my power supply. It, you just, it's not realistic. So what they end up doing is they start lowering the power and lowering the power of the servos. Well, eventually, guess what happens? Now the servos have no power, which they didn't anyway. They're designed to move grams, not pounds. Hmm. Well, we're using regular motors, electric motors, because wherever we park and leave them, it doesn't matter. So if I grip onto something, I can power the processor off. And I'm not using power anymore, and I've still yep. maintained the grip, right? Um, and when it wakes up, I don't have to reset the entire hand to wake up. Hmm. Uh, so what ends up happening is we're using these very, very simplistic, um, we're kind of leaning towards getting away from Adrenos. The power requirement's a little too high for us, and it doesn't mm -hmm. do what we need. We have a new technology we're working on, and I'm going to coin a new term because it doesn't exist, but we're calling it <laughs> we're calling it index gyroscopics. Okay, one of the What's things that? I don't like doing is I don't like using the standard sensors as what people are doing today, the Mayos. First off, they always have to be powered. It doesn't make sense. They use quite a bit in order to feed a processor that has to be there and alive. There's no real wake up function. You can kind of slow the processor down, but you're still using power. I'm using mm -hmm. micro bits that I can power all day long on two coin batteries, okay? And what we've done with the motors is we've changed how that works because we don't have a three wire like a servo where you park it, it stays. We can run it forward and we can run it reverse. What's really cool is if you have multiple motors, what we do is we index through them and we only power one at a time. But it's happening so fast, it's like persistence of vision. So we don't use anywhere near the power, but you can't tell that when you watch the motors index through the fingers. Okay, so we're really only running one at a time, but we disconnect one, go to the next, go to the next, and we're doing that so quickly that we're not, mm -hmm. we don't have the power drain. Try that with a, that would be very hard uh, any other way. So the MIDI is giving us that capability and we're using gyroscopics in order to run the arm. So say I take my arm and I twist it twice like this. Now anything I do, I've just selected number two with two, you know, but it, it's timed and you, you set the timing yourself. Now anything I do with my arm operates the hand, open, close, all of the things. I can change the index and then I'll say, well, I only want this one finger because I'm going to index three. So it goes like this. So hmm. consequently, I don't have all that real estate and all that hardware or the power requirements. It's just not there. I don't require now, it. Well, are we talking theory here or have you actually no. had an opportunity to build one of these and test it Oh, we've it got out? it running. Yeah, we've got it running. It runs fine. Excellent. Um, so who are you making these for? Like how many people have you had an opportunity to work with for these types of, of sort of MIDI-based assistive devices? The MIDI ones, only two. Uh, okay. We still build for other people, but we don't want to just turn this thing loose until we're ready. Sure. Um, we, have, we have a young lady who has no hands and no feet. And then, of course, you know Marcus with no, no hands and no feet. And we're building well, for I do, them. But I, do, I don't think our audience does. So let me go back to the shared screen. Let's introduce Marcus a bit, and you can tell us about the work you've done with him. So point me to an appropriate place to start here. Uh, let's see. Um, well, he's playing drums there. Oh, how about a uh, row, uh, row, right, uh, let's see, I, I lost my count, one, two, three, four, uh, five, row, oh, no, wait, row two, column one, right next Just to where he's on the, yeah. Um, okay. What this is is something we built, and uh, we designed the software, and we put it on an iPad, um, and then we put a wireless device on his arm. 
<laughs> we, we try okay. to do this to where they, we could just snap them on using standard enable type connections. So that's that wrist thing you saw. And you can see he's actually playing every instrument. He can way, select yeah. the instrument and then shake it. Because that's the only thing he could do then at that yeah, time. Okay. That's full MIDI. That's full wireless MIDI. That little tiny thing that's on the on the stalk there, it's yep. two inches around. That's doing all of this. Nice. So at this point, he's only talking to the iPad, but there's no reason why you can't take MIDI and you can branch it out to thousands of other uh, input devices or output devices. Your choice. You can, allow, you can allow different types of control yeah. from different movements. So this one was a very early adoption. It was kind of stupid. So really, all he could do at that time was shake it. Um, okay. Now it's we've gone way beyond that with the gyroscopics because when we didn't want to use the power, so what we started using is the micro bit controllers. The micro bits have all of this on board, and they're about, I mean, it's it's the size of a couple postage stamps. And it has accelerometers, it has MIDI, it has everything. Everything's already on this thing, and it's under 20 bucks. Nice. Do you, is any of, of that in here? Do we have a photo or video of that uh, latest? I don't know. I think so. I can point you to, uh, uh, if you go up a little bit, if you go to um, row one, two, three, four, column five, Right next to, that's it, right next to, there's a Mayo, it's right next to that. This is actually MIDI protocol, right here. So what I've done is I've taken a, a simplistic glove that is nothing more than um, some servos, and I use that because servos can work in reverse. So I took the servos, hooked them to my fingers, so as I move my yes. fingers, the servos and the glove move, or in the and the hand move. This will work up to about 50 right feet away. Move. Now, are you is there? Are you getting any like resistance on your yes. fingers, or no. is it? Yeah, you could. Don't do it. But That's it's all like, built into the protocol. Okay. It's yeah, fast, it's all built into the uh, protocol. You could do feeling. Now, what we were doing with feeling is we were using oh, those so little. Could, so if but, if the if the prosthetic grips onto something, you could actually pass that back and turn yes. like pressure on your fingers. Yes. To and we started using those little, you know, you know the little buzzer that's in your phone, you know, to makes your phone rattle. Okay. We use vibrate, those yeah. also for pain. So like if it's hot oh, or cold, we use that buzzer and then you can feel it. You know, you can so, feel it on yeah. your skin. Um, but you know, we can use the sensors and we can push down with a servo on the glove. Because it's a little easier, and that'll show tell how hard you're gripping. So you have feeling. Right? It's not that hard. It's built in. This is all part of MIDI. But as you can see, I turn my wrist, it turns, and look at the response on the fingers. Yeah, it was very responsive. Yeah, this is all MIDI protocol wireless, and it's called BLE in this ex in this example. We're using BLE because it's Bluetooth wireless, uh, 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 low energy, so it uses no power for the most part. Uh, hmm. anything that's so cool someone has. i actually so, wanted to ask you about this one here is there a, is there a story behind this there sure from? is oh my god this is a great story this uh, this guy is amazing and he's all over the internet now i did not do this i'll i'll, I'll start okay. that right there but 20 years ago he was a concert pianist i include this because this is this has made grown men cry he was a concert pianist, which I don't have to tell you the amount of effort it takes to have that level of competency to be a concert pianist. And he yeah. lost the use of his hands completely. These gloves he's wearing um, were, were given to him, and he can now play, not at concert level, but if you look at the, his face while he's playing, this says it all on why you want to do this. He's, I he, couldn't agree he, more. He is astonishing, the man. Um, and now, uh, once again, he can play. Now, this is not MIDI. It's very easy what the they point. did. Just yeah. The idea of somebody where music has been such a part of their life and it's they it's taken away somehow and they're able to regain that. Yes. And that's that's why I love this because, like you said, you can see that emotion on his face. So we gotta we got to play this one now. It's less than a I minute. hope you do. It's really worthwhile. Let's run this.
Is that not a story? That is absolutely wonderful. To give right. that man his life back. Okay, exactly. and we can do better than that. You know, we can do better that with the MIDI protocol because the haptic touch is there. It's, it's there. You know, it, it's built in. It's been there for 50 years. Um, some of these that I've also included, the one on the far right uh, on the column one, um, I, I don't, if you want to play it, it's okay, but there's a, there's a, a group of guys called, they've created what's called Anna Music. And you've yep. all probably seen it where the balls bounce on the thing. And the guys are brilliant. But they are. I have the that whole, DVD. It's really great. There's two now. They had two. Um, Did they? And yeah. And what's really interesting is all of that is MIDI. Yep. Every bit of that was done with MIDI. So yep. virtual instruments are now becoming really, really prevalent because oh, yeah. it's cheap. You don't have to haul all this hardware around. I have. My, my iPad is full of virtual instruments because we write them ourselves. Yep. And um, uh, so to me, uh, this is just so sensible and, and, and simplistic. And I don't have to work that hard because somebody has done all the work for us, right? It, it's, yep. it, it's just us. Now, I hope you don't mind, but on that, the, the, second, to the, last, uh, the second to the last row on the far right, um, this is Marcus's MIDI controller we, we set up for him. Now, he has MIDI guitars. He has MIDI drums. He's got up to five instruments now he's playing. Okay. And this is something new we, we wired him up to. Kind of a, like, so I like that controller you got there. It's yep. got like oversized keys for him. It's great for his nub. It's a cord, yeah. actually. Good, you know. It's a and cord? Okay. It, yeah, and we That's set it all up for him. It's wire, fully wireless. And we have the app on his iPad we put on there. Want to do that? And he wanted to play cello, so. I want to see your headbanger. Do your headbanger. You going to grow your hair so you can like... Do that? that is terrific. I'll grow my, if you do, I'll do it. I'll grow my hair like, why? What do you think I look silly? What's the chunk? See, he can do lead riffs. He's got it all right there. That's so much fun. Good head. <laughs> that does it as good as yours. Done it. That's good stuff. And his ability now to plug into our synthesizer wall is huge because now he can bring to bear these instruments that sure. we're building you, for him. You can assign any instrument you want to any one of those pads. That's the cool Or part. multiple instruments because with MPE yeah. and with the, the new advancements in the MPE protocol, it, it, the full polyphonic, you know, 24 voices is nothing. It's nothing. Hmm. And, yeah. you know, uh, uh, even the best synthesizers couldn't do it at the time. So now, all the how I, far I, back was, I wanted to play one of these ones that has some of you playing, too. How far back was how long ago did you do this one? That wasn't that long ago. What we had done is we built a cigar box guitar. Uh, this is actually a cigar like. made out of a cigar box. And yeah. it's a four, a four <laughs> spray. And... Um, This is how it would normally sound because of the electronics that are in it. And we were, this was a test. We were just testing it to see if it worked. I'm so just we were, amazed at what you're able to do with your left hand there. If uh, it, After the accident you described, I mean, that is pretty agile. You can thank my surgeon. That's amazing. But imagine that coming out of a cigar box. Yeah, those instruments are fun. That's a nice one. So this cigar box, I think we built for like 50 bucks, <laughs> you know, but it's souped up. I mean, this thing has uh, uh, two MIDI engines on it. Uh, it's all wireless. The whole thing's MIDI wireless BLE. Uh, it, it's, it's an awesome box. Um, we've, had a, we've had some musicians come to us. We didn't necessarily want to take them uh, because 
it's it's a big undertaking and I, oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm more interested in doing the amputees right now. So what do you see as that potential for the amputees? You gave us some examples here of what you've done with Marcus. Is is where's your focus? Are you working on other types of devices? Is it is it instruments or interfaces to instruments? What what are your thoughts about how how to further work with the community that wants to get in into music or back into music? Absolutely yes to everything you said. But I want to actually have them able to I want them to have one uh, one interface. So the same protocol they use to move their hands, their fingers, their wrists, their elbows, whatever it is that they have in their prosthetic, I want it to be the exact same interface they play that instrument with and vice versa. So imagine this. Can you I give actually, me an example. Yeah. Help me understand okay. that more. One more video, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, it, there's a video. Uh, I don't, if you could share your screen. Again, yep, there's go. a video with a guy, and this is going to hopefully explain exactly where we're going with it. The very number one. What this is, is it's a guitar. And let's just say you wanted to learn how to play the guitar. Ah, uh, yes. So what this guitar does is you feed it the MIDI, right? So you just feed the MIDI to the guitar. Now watch what happens. Look at the lights on it. Yep. So, what if instead of just lighting the lights, your hand was able to be moved by that? Sure. So this is a, a MIDI transceiver in this guitar. Sorry. So there's a transceiver there, which proves that you can send the same MIDI signals to the guitar or to an arm or to a hand. Now you have that two-way communication. Mm -hmm. And it just does it better than just taking an Adreno and, and, and trying to move servos, I think. I believe. For us, it has. I mean, okay. and you really don't give up that much because, say you're an Adreno fan, there's a MIDI library for free on GitHub. You download it, you install it, and you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. You know? All you got to do is take away a lot of the complexity you've already put in. So any specific uh, projects in mind for specific people that you're working with? Absolutely, yes. Um, oh, the, the, the processor right underneath uh, that guitar one you just played is the processor that we've been using. So if anyone's interested, we're using this. And if it gets out of hand where this can't deal with it, we're using a product called Teensy, which is an excellent board, super inexpensive. And it's just basically a MIDI engine. But this okay. little thing is tiny this micro bit and it has everything it has accelerometers it has midi it has uh bluetooth a wireless bluetooth it has uh, uh everything it's all there it's got a compass in it for god's sake it, it you know you can drive motors and huh. it, they used to be 20 bucks i think there's a problem with supply and demand right now but yeah. what's really nice is i can program marcus's arm with this chip, I don't even have to take it out. I can program it through BLE in oh, the arm. Nice. Yeah, right in the arm. You can just send code to it. That is very cool. So it's got a lot of advantage. And there's a screen on the other side, believe it or not. It's not nice. It's like a five by seven. But it allows you to, to, to have a video screen. All this for three volts. Very nice. You know? Nice. Uh, and I'm sorry about all the crazy pictures, but... We're, what we're finding is there's not a great deal that we can't do. We haven't hit any walls with MIDI yet. As a matter of fact, we just had to remove an awful lot of the complexity from our Adreno stuff hmm. is what we're finding. It's just easier. And all the libraries are 100% free. Um, they make uh, even, you know, I don't know if you use blocks. I'm not a real fan of the Microsoft blocks. The, the whole MIDI's in, in there in a block. So hmm. if you know if you want to program even at that level with the block level, it, it MIDI's in there. It's not overly sophisticated. And it's not going to do MPE, but that's all right. Um, it, it's two-way MIDI and it works, and the yep. price is right. So I guess in answer to your question, I'd like to see from what we're doing. It, I, I'm not speaking for everybody. From what we're doing, I'd like to have a common interface because what that does is it cuts out on a lot of the development. I don't want to support multiple interfaces and have to use different languages. I want it to be portable. I want to be able to switch 
processors and say, well, you know what, this processor, there's a better one now. And I don't want to start over. I want to just port it and have it go. Right. And I can do that. Well, and we've seen that. I, I've certainly seen it in the many years I've been working with Enable that if we can standardize something and document it and say, here's how to do this, or at least here's a way to do this, you're going to see so many more people starting to take advantage of it and work with it. People tend to be a little bit timid about jumping into something that they're unfamiliar with unless they can find a good tutorial or step-by-step -step instructions. So um, we're going to have to... The best to, language is the one you know, right? Yeah, exactly. So so you, you do so much wonderful work. Um, we need to figure out how to kind of standardize and share that, you know, with, like you said, a, a standardized... I, I can see this being very modular, um, a sort of a, an interface and sort of the standard code that you need and everything that could then be sort of dropped into any number of different enabled designs, right? Well, I know I showed you this already, but this one we did today, um, Marcus wanted it in gold. Because he <laughs> said, I want me some bling. That's what he told me. Are you but this, serious? This, this one we built today, and it's even better than the one I showed you before. Oh, and wow. Take this finger, right? Now look at this. Yeah. Can Isn't your finger cool? do that? Yeah, no, that's wonderful. And now, this is for I know how ugly this is, but this is... No, that's I'm gonna, okay. I'm going to be sharing this, this with Jacqueline, Jacqueline. And this is his... Yeah. Uh, th this this is going to be... I haven't finished it yet, but it's, this is going to be one of our... This this one's based on Jacques' hand. Okay, well, um, hold on. Hold the, up the finger the again. The NIOP. Hold up yeah. the finger again. Let's this is actually... This is actually this finger. Oops, I'm trying to... This little finger I just showed you goes here. Yeah. Okay. Right, so these these fingers are made out of a bicycle chain. In yeah. case people know that, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and it it offers some really interesting kinds of many jointed movement that uh, now uh, that you've been experimenting with. And here's what's interesting: we just found these. You see these slots in there? There's yeah. horizontal slots and there's holes in every every one of these, all the way through. Mm -hmm. So it made everything much easier. Okay, but but this thing is amazing. The grip, I mean, oh, yeah. we've picked we've picked up forty pounds with this. Forty, that's yeah. four zero, not four. This mm -hmm. thing is so with, with one finger. Okay, we've done that, and it, it's for the most part almost indestructible and super light. Um, this was this is one I think one half the weight of the one I showed you before that was made out of regular chain. They basically, what they did, this is like a racing chain. And see all the holes? Uh -huh. To make it lighter? Yeah. And it comes with ball bearings already built in, right? Amazing. And, and that's the thing. I mean, they are making it lighter. So assuming yeah. it's not too heavy, I, you know, especially I think kids are going to love this because it, it really has that look of, you know what, it reminds Terminator, me of Terminator. Yeah. Terminator, right, right after he comes out of the, the flames, right? Yeah. But if you so, look at, at the at the freedom of movement on this, I can curl it. I cannot do that with my finger, like that, yeah. as, as, as much, because it's got all of these. I, and actually, it'll keep going. It'll go all the way around to that. That looks very. So uh, yeah, we should have this done in about a week. We ran into oh. some problems because we didn't want to use the old chain, and and Amazon sent me this, but it didn't come until yesterday. So. Yeah we're, yeah, we're trying to get the new chain in and Jacques, I already told him I was going to do this to him. And uh, so this is going to be the first run. Will be, all of this is titanium here. The pins are all titanium. And uh, I know it's just hanging there because I have to configure it to sure. look like the, the other one. But that, I, I build them backwards. I start at the fingertip and build backwards into the hand. But this should work with, with almost practically any for the most part, uh, enable hands, you just, you, you just put them in place of the fingers. And this would be for really for someone that needed a little more dexterity and a lot more strength. Yeah. Um, that gentleman that you had uh, presented to us one day, he said that one of the biggest complaints is strength. Yeah. They just don't have the strength to pick any, this will pick it up. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is this is exciting. You're doing so much wonderful work, Rick, and I, I appreciate you sharing some of that with us. Now, I know that after we share this, we're gonna have some people that, that get excited and want to, you know, 
do some experimenting with this and we got to tell them where to go. So I know we got some work to do on documenting some of what you're doing and, and we'll work on that in the months to come. But for now, when you do something like this, when you come up with a new design, are you sharing these as open source designs? Like do you put these on Thingiverse or anywhere like that that people could find them? Well, um, we are really happy to share with anybody that wants. For the most part, um, because it's just me, you know, I haven't done a lot of very good documentation. So mm -hmm. by putting it in, for instance, uh, I hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, Jacqueline's, by using his hand, I'm going to give him everything we've done so he can append it for people that maybe this is a modification they want to make. He's very good at that. I'm terrible. I'm the worst when it comes to the documentation. So I want to go to the, the original designers, use, you know, basically uh, implement it on what they've already designed as, I don't know, an appliance, you know, something they could snap on as an alternative. I really don't like rubber hinges. Yeah, they they okay. just, I, you know, you pick something up and, and there's your fingers on the ground, right? It's just, they, I'm not a huge fan. These aren't falling off. Um, right. We were actually going to have to build a breakaway because we had one guy that was super concerned that, you know, it gets stuck in a machine and pull them in. Yeah, and, and, ends, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to build a breakaway on it. But for the most part, um, it works. And it works very well with our existing stuff. I think that's what's important. Why throw all that away? It's good. These guys have yeah. done an amazing job. Well, so it sounds like there's lots of potential. You've already done some very cool stuff with MIDI, but it, it sounds to me like there's just a lot of, of things that could still be done to, to make further use of that. And so I really look forward to seeing where you go with this. For those that are watching or listening and, and want to get involved or learn more, let's um, just point them to the Enable Hub, and I'll share these links in the description of this video. Uh, in the Hub, those of you who are part of Enable may already know this, we have a device catalog. And uh, in time, we will figure out how to get your designs and your methods into that device catalog and other appropriate places on the hub, Rick. Um, we have some new volunteers working with us this year to sort of redevelop that and, and make it easier to find things. So I, I think we'll be able to make it easier for people to find your work in the months to come. So stay yeah. tuned. For Good stuff. Well, uh, I will uh, um, include all the relevant links in the video description, as I said, and including an email address where you can reach out if you'd like to get in touch with Rick and get more details. And uh, I want to thank you for joining me today, Rick. This has been a lot of fun. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. You, you're always, you, you guys are always just awesome and uh, great to work with. You really are a lot of fun to work with. Um, well, that goes both you know, ways. Well, thanks for joining us today, Rick. Appreciate you uh, being with us. And thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you. I appreciate it.